welcome to another session, another session of the training. As long as the um, lockdown continues, we will bring different shades and different colors of capacity building uh, uh, during this window. And I trust that God will help us in the name of Jesus. I want to bring an announcement to those of us that are online. There are seven products that we have. Our campaigns are facilitated along the lines of seven products, just so you know that uh, the reason why we are inviting you to be part of the apostolic community is because of the initiative that God has given us to pioneer, which is intended to bring profit to the kingdom of God. And as we pioneer these initiatives, over the years we have come to understand the heart of the burden that God has uh, given unto us. And that burden can be fragmented and fully articulated in seven products. The first product is a Bible study product, which we have tagged what the Bible say. And the reason for this product is because in recent times we have seen infiltrations of the body of Christ with non-biblical, non-apostolic reforms that the devil is trying so hard to smuggle into our civilization and our culture. So we came up with this product as a means of addressing uh, the body of Christ and bringing the perspective of the scriptures in confrontation with uh, this strange non-apostolic reforms that the enemy is trying at all cost to smuggle into the body of Christ. I gave an example of a time where a few people claimed that they died and went to hell and resurrected with a prophecy for the body of Christ. And we had to contend with the substance of that prophetic word. And we found at the end of the Bible study that indeed God, something spoke to them, but it wasn't uh, God because God does not speak outside of the scope of his word. So we do what the Bible say as a, an, an, an analgesic and a therapeutic um, initiative uh, by which uh, the, we are sanctified by the truth because the word of God is truth. The second product we have is the school of the kingdom. There is an administrative reality that is uh, consequent upon our salvation. There's a historical part of our salvation. There is an administrative part and there's an ontological part. The administrative part of our salvation is our entry into the kingdom and our oppression under the government of God. Many Christians do not realize that salvation is an entry into a kingdom and we are supposed to understand how to operate within this frame of reference. So the product, the school of the kingdom, is an attempt at educating the believer and making him uh, a responsible citizen of that kingdom and yielding to uh, the government of the king of that kingdom. Uh, salvation is not the goal. The kingdom is the goal. And that was what God was offering Adam in the garden of Eden. It was dominion that God was offer offering, not a pause, not an account number, not uh, account details. It was a kingdom. And uh, salvation is a remedial initiative to bring into view uh, the possibilities of that government and the extent to which we uh, function as agencies that God can use to facilitate his program is dependent on our yieldedness to his authority. In fact, God is not powerful in your life if he's not Lord of your life. In the past 25 years in the body of Christ, there has been a downplaying of the concept of the kingdom. Uh, it is more about personal actualization, personal possibility, personal progress, personal success, personal economic empowerment. Uh, bits and pieces of that reality is captured in the possibilities that are bound with Christ, but the very context in which God manages our destiny 
is within the context of the kingdom. And so the second product that we have is the school of the kingdom. The third product is what we call the part of spiritual progress. Part of spiritual progress. There are uh, the book of Romans is not a message, it's a map, it's a navigation instrument. Uh, if you read that book with understanding, you should be able to know where you are in your journey with God because the entire scope of the part of spiritual progress is laid out to uh, the advanced level of our Christian engagement. Many times people are not able to trace where they are on the map. They are outside of circulation from the pathway that God has ordained, uh, majoring in the minors, gaining mastery in frivolities, and thinking that they are making spiritual progress. So the third product is the part of spiritual progress. It's a map, a navigation instrument that can unveil your current location in our journey in Christ Jesus. There were 41, 42 stations from, the, uh, from Egypt to Canaan. And these 42 stations are critical points in our journey with God as we seek to access our destination, which is the fullness of Christ. And when you come to the book of Matthew chapter 1, you are going to see that there are 42 generations from Adam, from Abraham to jesus christ which is representative of each point in the station uh and the experience of the children of israel as they navigated from the house of bondage into the land of promise it is a map there is a navigation instrument that the believer is supposed to have to aid his journey many people have plateaued on on point two they, and they have stayed there for 14 years uh, once and again god will have to come through the instrumentality of a prophet to say you have tarried around this mountain for too long to them that was <laughs> where god was headed but it was a detour it was a manipulation it was a deception from the enemy and um that's why we have that product the part of spiritual progress so that we can confront believers with the map and everybody will see from scriptures where they have decided to end their pilgrimage, which is not the terminus. A fourth product we have is the product that we are, we are running now, which is the school of ministry. The instruction that God gave to uh, Moses to tell Pharaoh was, let my people go that they may serve me jesus said that if you want to be great in this kingdom become a servant that is to say that the pathway to greatness in the kingdom your designation in the kingdom is the designation of a servant you don't outgrow servanthood and it's just that we have senior servants we have all kinds of shades and colors of servants but you don't stop being a servant every believer is called into the ministry and the grace that is upon the fivefold is supposed to be uh, a grace that advances them in spiritual experiences so that they can have the capacity to provide um, education capacity building and 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 impartation so that the believers can do the work of the ministry so we are actually running that um, product now it's called school of ministry there's the fifth product is called the school of prophets it was moses that said in the book of numbers numbers chapter 29 that i wish that all the lord's children were prophets and that he will put his spirit upon them the desire of moses came to pass in the new testament economy because in the new testament economy god affords the believer access to his spirit and this doesn't make all of them operate from the prophetic office but he allows them operate uh, in the prophetic um, operating system the prophetic nature and that was what god meant when he spoke about israel and referred to israel as prophets touch not my anointed ones and do my prophets it was a people group that he was referring to and he called them prophets to my prophets no harm the holy spirit in our heart is in, is an instrument an instrument of perception that brings us into uh, reality and contact with the economy of heaven 
And if we are adequately instructed in uh, as to how the Holy Spirit furnishes the reality of the things that pertain to the kingdom of heaven, we will be proficient believers at such a time as this. We also have another product, which is, we call it uh, the healing streams. It's uh, an atmosphere for the release of the healing anointing. This product is um, was recently included in our uh, sh uh, catalog of products. It's, it's, it's when the healing anointing became ripe, we knew that there was an emphasis that God was putting upon us to provide an avenue for the flow of this stream and uh, the sixth product is the healing streams. The seventh product is, is what we call the Spirit and Life Conference. The purpose of that conference is uh, what the kind of thing that Paul said in the book of First Corinthians chapter 2 when he said that my speech and my preaching was not with the enticing words of man's wisdom but in the demonstration of the spirit and of power the spirit and life conference is an avenue for the demonstration of the spirit and of power it's a line of these are the seven products that our initiatives camp around and so if we are coming uh, to your neighborhood in your nation where you are domiciled, we'll be coming with one of these products consistent with the need that God reveals that is prevalent in that territory. On, in keeping with these products, we have strategies. We have strategies of implementing uh, the burden that God has given us. The first strategy, which is what we have taken to the campuses, is what we call apostolic invasion. Apostolic invasion uh, and the purpose of the apostolic invasion is the kind of thing that paul said when he said i desire to come to you so that i might impart spiritual gifts that 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 ye may be established it, it's an avenue to um, make available that which is lacking in the faith of many people and also to provide platform for impartation so that people that are growing can become confident in the move of god on their lives another pro uh, strategy that we have had in penetrating is what we call the kingdom matters where we emphasize uh, the things of the kingdom we got that statement from um what samuel said samuel while he met with with saul and so thought that he was looking for donkeys and Samuel cleared his doubts and told him that the donkeys that he was looking for were already found that means the reason for which he was navigating was different from donkeys it was a journey that God had you know put him through so that he could get wind of kingdom matters we have ministers conferences which we began uh, I guess two years ago it's another strategy of empowering the body of christ uh, we have believers conference which is what we call international egos conference we normally hold it in may but um the corona experience has adjusted most of the schedules worldwide and for this year it will be from the 21st of august to the 6th of september we are also into crusades and missions and there is a crusade brand is what we call the festival of glory and it is uh, our intention to take the festival of glory from territory to territory and also from nation to nations we understand by the spirit of god that this time god is giving us a renewed vigor for foreign missions and that forms our most recent strategy for admissions it means that somewhere somewhere along the line we might be in your neighborhood proclaiming god's kingdom god's power and god's glory and that is why we are asking for everyone that is online come on board join the chariot so that we can put our hands together and wage a more global warfare against the dominion of darkness and as we go from place to place with our campaigns 
um, as we are led of God, we plant what we call apostolic centers. It's not a traditional church setting, but it is a ground that is given to the development of believers so that each and every one in that community will be able to find his or her destiny. So these are the strategies and these are the products um, that we have. It is to this end that we um, request that each and every one hearing the sound of my voice will, should consider being a part of the remnant apostolic community. It's a nation. It's a spiritual nation. And these are the products that we are peddling and the merchandise that Jesus has given us with which to do this business is his life. Those of us that have indicated interest, because when you become part of a community, you are also responsible. The community runs because people are responsible. If you are not aware of it and you are in public service, there's a part of your earnings that is deducted for the purpose of taxes so that roads can be constructed. Even though in our own country, we don't see the roads, we don't see the water, but the tax, they are faithful in deducting the tax anyway, because in a community, in the community, everyone that is part of that community has a responsibility to the general good of the land. So there are responsibilities that you will have to shoulder in order for us to corporately have the capacity and the wherewithal, the economy, to be able to drive kingdom profit, kingdom invasion, kingdom influence in your neighborhood. We need every man. We need every woman. We need every pound, every euro, every dollar uh, in order to drive the agenda of this time. And it happens to be that the time is short and in the calendar of God, what is raining now is revival. The reason why we're doing this and we'll keep doing it until the lockdown is over. And even when the lockdown is over, we, we have changed. We have changed to be more responsive to the new season that we are perceived in the spirit. This kind of stuff, we continue. We continue. We see that there is a gap in the body of Christ that God is trying to fill. And uh, with the little resources of grace that uh, God has made available, we are ready to take up the challenge. So join the chariot. When you join the chariot, you are going to see, as I'm speaking now, the Dex man, the online pastor, is already ably situated to show you what to do online to come into the community. When you come into the community, there is a form that is there. It contains our covenant, our responsibility, your responsibility, so that we can partner together adequately. And that might require you filling up the form. And the moment you send it, it goes to our website and it updates uh, itself automatically. It, we, we extract the update and we will analyze it and eventually we are going to push you to a group that is um, sensitive to your region. So people in Europe are going to be in one group. People in the United Kingdom because they happen to be very many. People in the United States and like that. People in Africa. And uh, we hope to be able to uh, engage these people different groups from Zoom with Zoom so that we can share the body more adequately and why we are saying join this chariot. If we have no reason to ask you to join, we will not be bold enough to come like this. But these are the products that we have uh, to do the Lord's business and to uh, fill up that which we sense is lacking in the body of Christ. God bless you. We have been talking about power. We, we, we spoke about power so much because we are trying to introduce um, the power gifts. We had to understand the reason for power, the, how the um, kingdom of God is structured by power, um, the administration of God's purposes that is on the operating system of power. For the Bible says that um, according as his divine power has given unto us uh, things that pertain to life and Godliness That was made available to us by his divine power. It's an economy of power that is at work in your spirit right now. And Jesus feels that natural life is supernatural indeed. And that's why he didn't leave us naked. He said, and ye shall receive power. In a short time, I want to do something quick. Okay, maybe another announcement will be critical at this time. 
from Monday, which is tomorrow, uh, is, is a season for the lionesses. The lionesses. And what I mean by the lionesses is that um, they are the best hunters. If you check the, you, re, you watch um, National Geographic, you find out that in the pride lands of the lion, the lionesses are the best hunters. The, the lion is the king of the jungle because he has lionesses, a lot of lionesses around. And that's the framework that we can learn from uh, hunting parties that um, even the king of the jungle depends on the lionesses for his, his meal. But in the body of Christ, we see that the lionesses are referred to as a weak, insignificant folk, and that's the reason why we have been working on crutches. And one of the things that God is going to do in this season is to release these lionesses. They have a place in the palace. The Bible says that these lionesses are, are pillars. The sons are pillars and the daughters are cornerstones. The cornerstones form the reinforcement structure upon which the entire building rests. But they are hidden. And this is the season for the equipment of the voice of the lionesses. If by any means we are going to win against the serpent of Africa. So we are releasing the voice of the lionesses from Monday to Sunday. And in view of that, in the parliament here, it is a taboo for any pastor, male pastor, to come and spoil their congregation. So what I mean is you are not invited. <laughs> in the most polite way possible. These are, these are their words. They say I should convey, who, who am I, who am I? Who am I to confront you like this? They, they have, they, they pleaded with me to convey their... <laughs> so, you stay at home and stream, and the lionesses, 15 of them, will be allowed into the parliament. Our limit in Benue State is 20, but we are doing 15, so that uh, we we'll stay in, in check, we we'll stay in balance. May the Lord give us understanding. So those of us, those lionesses that are there, scattered abroad, online, and if you are not a lioness, online, everybody is admitted. But in the parliament, I'm talking about the parliament, the immediate parliament here is going to be, except you are an essential uh, functionary, and I mean the technical people, the, you, are, you are allowed on the ticket of, of expression and function to, but it's, it's for the lionesses. God, uh, may the Lord give us understanding. The gift of faith. First of all, I will need to say something quickly before I begin to talk about the gift. This is what faith will do to you. Hallelujah. And when the gift of faith begins to operate in your life, you are going to notice these symptoms. Don't forget that we are in the end time and the devil is going to want to come on us hard. But the Bible says that where sin abounds, the grace of God much more abounds. I was reading about Jesus today, how he turned, he multiplied bread. And I believe that when that time comes where we cannot buy or sell, we will operate in that anointing. We will multiply mangoes, multiply apples. I believe it with all my heart. It will be time for the supernatural become commonplace. And so we need to prepare ourselves for this reality. It's not as if we are going to be helpless. The devil is not that strong. And he, he has not grown in power from the time of his defeat on the cross. God is going to make a way out for his people. If we are face to face with darkness, it doesn't mean we will be cut off. He knows what to do. Because if believers will still be alive at the time the trumpet will blast, it means we won. So get set. It's a time where the supernatural will become natural. And so the body of Christ must be trained to think outside the box of the flesh and to consider the limitless power and possibility that lies with the grace of God. First thing quickly about faith. Faith sees possibilities when others see defeat. It's the first thing you must know. And it doesn't matter where you were born. It doesn't matter who died when you were five. It doesn't matter all the uh, inconsistencies that are part of your experience. When God wants to change you, the thing he does is that he makes you see outside of the box. And when you begin to consider the possibilities that exist outside of the box of limitation, that the devil is carefully, meticulously trying to weave around your life. 
It causes you to see beyond the restriction, the narrowness of circumstances that the devil brings. So that beyond that narrowness, you can consider a possibility. Beyond that straightness, you can believe that there is a reality that God has for you. Hallelujah. Faith sees possibilities. Sometimes if you are not careful, when you hear a man of faith speaking, you might think he's boasting. But if you have traveled to, in the realm of God a little, you'll find out that with God, nothing shall be impossible. I know when I came here, it, it was four years ago, and I said I have seen in the spirit, we will reach the world. When I spoke, we were like 32 people in the congregation. And they thought I was one of those times when I go off balance. I thought something was slightly wrong with the pastor. But, well, well, not too wrong, but slightly wrong. They felt I was over ambitious, that I was just speaking things that were vain. And, uh, but I have seen. Don't be quick to judge a man except you understand the economy that runs his spirit. Faith makes a man see possibilities when others see defeat. If we hear you speak, we'll know what economy is running on your inside. If God decides to have mercy on you, one of the things he will do is he will plant you in a place like Makodi, where there are so many difficulties. It's a good training. If you survive here, huh? you will become an apostle to the nations. <laughs> There's enough challenges to keep you on your knees and God will be faithful to give you enough testimonies to encourage you. So there are two things. Enough testimonies to encourage you and enough challenges to keep you on your knees. Secondly, faith sees victories before they are manifested. Faith. It sees victories before they are manifested. It sees victories before they are manifested. How many of you have started seeing victories in the spirit? Because this is a season of victory. I'm not joking. I'm not joking. I'm, I'm, I'm alive in the spirit, I tell you. I am alive in the spirit by the grace of God. And, and there, there are so many victories. I see it almost weekly. Victories in the spirit. When you begin to see that kind of thing, and you know this is a body experience, it's not a personal experience, and you check with your brother, you check with your sister, and you begin to see that that pattern, that trend of victory is in the spirit. God is about to occasion a shift. Men of faith see what is coming and they make the necessary adjustment to accommodate what is coming. While men that do not operate by faith, they will be standing there until the thing that is coming meets them. They can see victory before it is manifested to the eyes of others. As the gift of faith begins, there are many manifestations of the gift of faith. And that's why I'm taking you through this drill. When you begin to notice that your neighbor is only seeing defeat and you are seeing possibilities and you don't have any reason to see the possibilities that you are seeing, it might just mean that the spirit of faith and the gift of faith is beginning to run through your life and God is preparing you for a miracle. You see, the things of God happen to be spiritual. God is spirit and we need to access him and understand his currency before the impact of that as assessing of God is made manifest. God's modality of operation cannot ignore the necessity of faith. And that's why the Bible says, he that cometh to God must believe that he is. It's not, it can't happen any other way. So if there's going to be a miracle in your life, one of the things God does is that he imparts faith to you so that you can receive. Some of you are weak. The instrument with which you use to cultivate your farm it's not the same instrument you use for harvest. You may use a hoe when you are trying to get the thing running, but you might end up with a sickle. But some people hold holes throughout the season. May the Lord give you understanding. There's a time you change. <laughs> you started with a hoe, a strange hoe. I've seen all kinds of holes, and I don't want to go into that now, but you might end up with a sickle. It is a man of faith Having seen what is coming, having sensed what is coming, he keeps the hole at home. And he goes only with the sickle. And people that do not see the victory, that do not see what is coming, and they, don't, they cannot switch into the grace 
that supports the new season that has come. So faith has an eye. It was those days we used to preach that faith is blind. Hallelujah. Take that message to the trash can. Faith is not blind. Faith has eyes and faith can see. And faith sees victory. If you hear the way uh, Joshua and Caleb were speaking in that congregation, they went for observation. Ten people were speaking defeat. Two people were speaking victory. And all of them were right. Some people were speaking from the standpoint of faithlessness. Their circumstances were exalted. Some people were speaking from the standpoint of faith. Their circumstances were stepping stones. The spirit of faith and the gift of faith will make you see what a normal person will call an obstacle. You will see it as an opportunity. It's when God opens your eyes, you will find out that every territory has a weakness. A weakness that you can exploit. So that possibilities and actualization can become your portion. If God intensifies. You know, before I came to Makodi, I met a senior preacher. I said, ah, why did God send you to Makodi? He said, we remember this brother that went to Makodi. And after eight years, we are not hearing from him. We remember that brother. And the brother died. We remember this brother and he had marital problems. Him and his wife were divorced. His wife was working in a free bank. And the details were so many. Hallelujah. But as sober as I became when I left that place where I was given an update of how many ways to fail in Makodi. When I went to the place of prayer, I did not see any of the symptoms that I was told. <laughs> Hallelujah. And then when you begin to behave otherwise, people say, no, 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 the spirit of pride is upon him. The spirit of pride is upon him. <laughs> because people are more convenient when you are, <laughs> when you are, with, when you are helpless. It is what is the testimony of the spirit of God in your spirit that is true. Let God be true. And let every man allow God to be true. That's what it means. Let God allow God to be true. And let allow every other man to be a liar. Just in case there is conflict between what you are hearing in your spirit and what men are saying. Allow men to be liars. And allow God to be true. Because if you do the opposite and allow God to be the liar. And you allow men to be true. The things that men have said will become true in your life. How much of victory can you see where you are seated now? How much of victory? Because somebody told me that Satan took a fork. That fork was like a lance. He took a lance, a, a mighty lance, and Satan had been chasing him for 12 years. So all he's seen for 12 years is Satan and, and the big lance. Oh my God. Oh my God. You were not redeemed by anything that has to do with the devil. Yeah, there's no devil in your redemption equation. Oh my God. So it's so strange that for 12 years, ah, no. Maybe, you, maybe you're having a spiritual attack. And uh, you can be having a spiritual attack and believe that that is not your reality. You can still live outside of the box of that attack. How many, haven't you have a, had a spiritual attack before? That attack is not your, not your reality. The devil wants to make you think that that's your reality. It is not. And we keep on attacking the attack but i know my reality my reality is in christ jesus is not in the kingdom of darkness and the pastor was so consumed with the lance that satan was holding and looking for him everywhere oh <laughs> yes oh, for 12 years oh my god and someone that is already defeated inside is defeated on the ground that's the way it works if you have victory inside it's just a matter of time you are going to begin to see manifestation. Before I entered the current season I entered, it was a long, a long season of witness, of inner victory. Inner, oh my God. I was, I was living in the victory in my spirit before it began to even trickle out. Messy drops of that victory began to trickle out in the natural. Don't believe the devil. Faith sees the victory. You see, if a man that operates in the gift of faith comes here, and especially men like Benson and Ahosa, there are some people that they, they have a, a, an overdose of faith, you know? You know what they call overdose? Yeah. In, in Ahosa. So, so much so that he, he, he didn't know when he was operating by the gift of faith or when it was his own natural faith. He, 
he does the same things under the same under different circumstances and he gets results so he doesn't know the difference anymore that's what made him who he was he was always at the threshold of maximum faith so for him there'll be many possibilities for him there'll be most there'll be many actualizations and at the age of 62 he had gone around the world six times only a cherubim can do that successfully <laughs> only only a cherubim see me i just went to um, um a few states to sokoto to zamfara to kasina to kano to ah, then i came home i told my wife my back then will now be in a strange massaging session with prayer a man hits the world six times in one lifetime ah, it is obvious he didn't see the the, the pothole in a gumale that yeah he didn't notice it you didn't notice the pothole in your village, the poverty in all humanity. You <laughs> didn't notice it. May you not notice useless things in the name of Jesus. Oh my God. When Apollo 11 went to the moon and took a snapshot of the earth, the only thing they saw was Africa. It was glowing on the map. And you know what? They didn't see our poverty. If you, if you take a good perspective, a good range, you will see the right things. And the things the devil wants you to see, you will not see them. The man of faith does not see the things the devil wants him to see. Meanwhile, the devil goes around with the camera and he takes snapshots. And he wants you to be looking at his snapshots until the day you die. But a man of faith doesn't see what the devil is presenting. Until the devil knows that he's achieving nothing by showing this man pictures. Because this man has, has his own pictures. This man has his own prophecy. This man has the things he has chosen to believe. A human being went around the world six times. At the age of 62, he had done that. He had an overdose of it. And we, that's where we are, we are migrating to. Because, yes, that's where we are migrating to. The three apostles that form our foundation in Pentecostal Christianity reveals that Nigeria is the apostolic face of Africa. Yes, the team, the team of apostles that will bring redemption to the world, they will rise from here. I know that. Just like Ghana is the prophetic face of Africa. There, there, there is, yeah, no, there are many wrong prophetic, polluted prophetic expressions, just like there are many polluted apostolic expressions here, and they are masquerading from the kingdom of darkness to try to uh, 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 copy the real flow. But if there is a counterfeit, it means that there is an original. So we do not um, understand, read the move of God by the manifestations of the devil. We read the move of God by the manifestations of the Holy Spirit. And right now, God is in a mad chase all right to raise apostles that will represent him from this continent and so the labor of our in order for the labor of our heroes past not to be in vain we need to check our heritage and in our heritage is a rich volume of the life of faith as we see in pa elton as we in babalola and as we see in benson idahosa which is the tripod of the pentecostal christianity uh, and all of us are offshoots of one of or all of the above movements at this point in time and if you put the engine of honda into your Peugeot car the performance will be honda uh, uh, so what is in your spirit we have an idea of his performance is apostolic it is it is a fighting warfare it's a warfare capacity it is maximum rated and so your possibilities should be plenty faith sees what the victory he sees it before it is manifested faith speaks with authority these are the symptoms that you are going to manifest when this gift of faith is operational everybody might be speaking defeat everybody might be speaking circumstances speaking situations speaking how that salaries have not been paid for the past six months and we are living off the table of the rich man as the case was with lazarus hallelujah but faith speaks with authority the defeat in the system doesn't affect him the defeat in civil service the failure of civil service 
doesn't affect him. He sees a possibility, a layer of reality that is beyond his context. Oh my God. Oh my God. And nothing the devil throws at him that can make him 